Hey, welcome to On The Rocks, man. It's our first episode, so I'd like to cheers you guys on um, for uh, tuning in. Thanks a lot. You know, uh, it's going um, to be a good night talking uh, some wild stories and some crazy stories with a good friend of mine. But I want to talk a little bit first about why we created this show. You know, my partners here at Offshore Music, Ms. Heb Burns and everybody in Offshore, um, we, we've been talking about a music show for the past couple of months. And we really just thought of, you know, it's, 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 it's amazing that you can just... Um, Find music at your fingertips nowadays, uh, whether you uh, belong to a streaming platform, whichever that may be, you know, whether it be Spotify or Apple Music or even YouTube, you know, music is at your fingertips. And what we really thought about was, you know, to find out the stories behind the music, um, to get to know the men and women that created the music and more importantly, living the life of the music. And that's what the show is all about. So, of course, it's going to be a crazy show. Um, hey, it's me. So we have a few house rules here that um, I give to all my guests, and I hope you guys don't mind because if you do, then, you know, there's not much you can do about it anyway. So tonight we're going to be drinking. We're going to be smoking. We're going to be swearing as we make cuento about music, living the life, the ups and downs, and everything it takes to become a musician and to live the life of a musician here in Manila or, hey, elsewhere, because, you know, pretty soon we're going to have some international guests as well. So On the Rocks is a concept that we thought about, you know, what would be the best setting for, um, for an online show to get to know the the musicians better to get to know the artists better to get to know the people behind the music and and just just so you know we're not going to be just talking to artists and musicians we're going to be talking to designers um road managers roadies groupies the wives of you know we've got a whole program like lined up um until the end of the year actually we might have to extend because everybody's like coming in and booking and I, i'm really really grateful for that so um yeah so that's um, that's why we created this show. And on the rocks, we were thinking, what's the best environment to be in? So just think of me as your, as your friendly bartender who's seen a lot of things and been through some shit, you know. And um, just believe that we're sitting in a bar. We're sitting in a bar. We're having a friendly drink, and we're having a a chat. And that's pretty much all it is. But I'm going to be trying to ask some very difficult questions, not the usual question and answer that you see in the uh, in the interviews um, for the artists nowadays. Um, some left field, hopefully, um, you know, our, our artists and our guests are going to be game. And I think that's um, that's sorely lacking in the broadcasts nowadays. So we're hoping to fill up that space. So if you're tuning in right now, I'd like to thank you so much for tuning in. Um, so tonight, we're going to be talking about um, the life and times of a legendary guitar player who is, um, you know, a good friend of mine and really is one of the best guitar players and one of the best people that I've actually had the privilege of knowing and playing with and gigging with and recording with in my life. Um, really, he's, he's instrumental in bringing me into the music scene. He's one of my mentors and really, he's played with the greats. He is a Pinoy rock icon himself. And he's played with all the icons, such as Pepe, Pepe Smith, Bosho, who's Edmund Fortuno. He's played with Samuel and Sean, Grace Nono. I mean, you, you name it. You know, he started out very young in the heydays of Pinoy rock in the 70s. And, you know, the best thing about it is he's recording a new album and it's being mixed and mastered right now. It's going to be coming out soon. Now, you know, this guitar player, is amazing in the sense that every time you see him live, you walk away with a sense of awe at how he plays, what he plays, and basically, you know, everything, everything about that performance is amazing. He's best appreciated live. But, you know, as we know, we're going through this pandemic now and this crisis. So live gigs, live gigs aren't happening yet, right? But I'm glad that he's recording. And I'm glad that we're digging up uh, some music that he's played so that it's going to be made available to you guys. So at least we get to enjoy his performances from our own home. So, you know, um, legendary guitar player, good friend, fellow Buddhist, and um, one hell of a rock and roll guy. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for June Lupito. 
Hi guys. Hey Jude, how you doing, hey, man? Jamie, we're back. I know we're back, baby. We're back. <laughs> so June, how you doing during this pandemic, man? You surviving? You okay? Still the same. Still the same, I guess. You know, I mean, watering the plants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Waiting for it to grow. Nagdidilig para na halaman. Yeah. There you go, man. Yeah. So, yeah. so June. Um. So we're very excited to hear about your new album. And we're really excited. I mean, you know, we're going to be hearing about that whole process about how you ended up with Offshore and what this new album is about. But, you know, I want to talk to kids out there who are listening. The kids. Yeah, right. Sorry. I'm, I'm a Tito of Manila already, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, the, 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 the kids don't really know who you are because they weren't around during the heyday. So I'd like to go back in time and basically give them an idea of um, the span of your musical journey. Which is, you know, that spans like what, 40 years already? You've been a musician? 40 plus like, years? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Going, going 40. Uh, going on 40 years. See, that's, you know, and you're still, and you're, and you're about to release an album. That's fantastic. You know, that's fantastic. Tough luck, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. I mean, hey, man, it's, it's, a, yeah, it's a it's life of ups and downs. Yeah, it's good fortune for me. Well, I mean, it's a blessing, cool baby. People. All right, so June, so let me know. So how did you discover music? How did you discover rock and roll? How old well, were you? I, I, I woke up like uh, when I was like eight, seven years, eight years old. And um, I woke up in the morning and I saw this rectangular case under my bed. I said, Who, what's this? You know. So I pulled it out. It was a... Uh, it was the 1956 Stratocaster, like wow. Eric Clapton's, you know, like uh, it's it was uh, black and maple neck, you know. Nice. And it was my brother-in-law's, Tony Halandoni's guitar. So it it was under the bed of checking it out, you know. But this is, was really 1956 model. And it's beautiful. And at, at home in, uh, in Valhalla, in Pasay, we uh, they always have jammings in the house. They have parties, you know, 1965, yeah, you know, 65, 66. They had parties, and I see bands, I see Pepe, I see, you know, they were playing Stones here, you know, they, they played with the Beatles. Uh, you know, I got I got that influence from them, you know. So what's the first? Plus, what's what's the, what's the first like song? rock and roll song you remember hearing that made you sit up and say oh my god this is this is it well it's actually the song of the beatles like help help was the first one yeah and you know in the 60s that was a new release yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, 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 it gave me a like whoa that's a nice that's a nice energy this, the song is was really powerful and it hit me and then, so you start. My, my the, sisters were playing Satisfaction on the other there side, you, the other room. There you go. Me. Yeah. The bad boys of rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so, uh, you, you, um, so you did you pick up the guitar immediately? Uh, did your brother in law, Shitoni Alandoni, um, no, start I, teaching I, I you just how to play? Looked at it. I just looked at it. <laughs> I was just riding my bicycle and going around with my friends, you know. Like, no, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't get it yet, you know. So and what, I, age, I got what it. age were you in when you discovered the guitar? When you wanted to pick up and play the guitar? I played. I I picked it up uh, an acoustic guitar with my brother-in-law. I picked it up like 1969, and I I didn't know any chords. I was like 10 years old, you know, going 10. So how do I do this? So I just. Uh, Pluck the strings, the E string, with my finger fingerprints, you know, like, and I can hear it. it it's funny because now that I'm a Buddhist, I'm chanting. I hear the same, the same frequency, the, the, same the, the tone, you know. Yeah, with that, with with one string, with one string. Yeah, yeah. And so when you started learning uh, the guitar, what was the first song you learned? Well, it, there, there were two. Love Song by Elton John, you know. Yeah. Because, of course, you're like a first-year high school kid, and, you know, you got a crush here on this. 
panligaw. Yeah, eh. yeah. And I got interested with the stairway to heaven thing because it was like, whoa, that's, if I learn this, you know, probably they'll, she'll answer me. <laughs> she, she, she did. She said no. <laughs> Yeah, but that didn't stop you, though. That didn't road. stop you. Yes, yeah, Stairway to Heaven, I had a little difficulty. So I asked my brother-in-law, which he was going to work, said, Kuya Tony, can you teach me the 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 middle part? Because I figured out already the first part, now yeah. the plucking, since I know uh -huh. how to pluck it. And the, the thing, the, the, the rhythm, like, who makes me wonder? That yeah. part, it, it's like, it's like, Jimmy Page was playing on a 12 string. So my brother-in-law was adding little, little, it's pinky to a different, uh, and it will sound like a 12 string. Yeah. You know? How do you do that? You know, <laughs> it's, it's a trick. You know, so if you don't have a 12 why... string, you just move this note here. And it, but I don't know what note it is, but I could remember everything that he taught me. So yeah, for those of you who don't so know, it was like like I've, been, I've been playing, I've been playing with June um, for a while uh, over the years, and you you don't read or write music, right? No, no, I don't. Yeah, so it's all by I ear. By ear. Yeah, you play yeah. it by ear, and you I play it by out, like I figured out, the out chords the sound. by ear. Yeah. There you go. I can so hear when the you... chords one by one, mm -hmm. and where to put my strings. It's funny. I I don't know how I do it, but I do it. You know. <laughs> It's just the you know, it's just the magical rock and roll, baby. You know, you really yeah, love yeah, something, so, and you're I gonna, guess. and you're gonna figure out how to do it. Yeah, because so, you know, you know, Pepe, Pepe will go in the house. I don't even know him. I, he always tells me, "Hey, you know, where's your sister? I wanna, I wanna speak to your sister. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> See this? The twelve by uh, uh, the album of the stone. That's me. Really? <laughs> you know? Okay." Wait a minute. So my brother-in-law comes out and he goes, Oh, Tony, I said, you're a Filipino. You're, <laughs> you're, you're fooling me, man. And this is Pepe Smith, guys. So he would yeah, go to the like, house I was like trying to hit on old. your sister. Yeah, yeah. And Pepe would be trying to hit on your sister. Yeah, That's yeah. Classic, he was wearing man. a turtleneck, a leather jacket at high noon. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like him. Plus leather pants, pa, I'm sure, pare. <laughs> a leather pants, pa yon. So, so, Jude, so, so you picked up the guitar, and yeah, yeah. you told me that you started playing in a choir? Yeah, so yeah. You're, you're a uh, choir uh, boy? When we moved, because we were moving. When my dad died, we started moving around. So when I first held the guitar, was on Ibulacan. So when, the, when Neil Armstrong, when Apollo 11 landed, that's where I started you know, to play this. You hear this tune. And then we moved to um, Tondo. I mean, uh, the, the, the town is called Barrio Obrero. It's like uh, going to Caloocan City okay. via uh, Rizal Avenue, going straight to Monument, Monumento. D during the 70s, it was still, it was still, it was martial law, by the way. That yeah. time it was declared yeah. martial. And I was there. We could, it was a lockdown already. <laughs> we couldn't go out and all that. So I met. Wait, so, so, this is, so this is this is nineteen seventy two when martial law it's was declared. Yeah, and you know it was just the anniversary of martial law, and yeah. you know since you since you brought it up, I mean, how different was pre martial law into martial law? I mean, you guys had to deal with curfews. Yeah, um, we, had, we had to deal did with you curfews. have long hair. Did you have long hair back then? No, I didn't have because I was still in my teens. I was like hmm. 12, 13 years old. So you know, I couldn't. The school wouldn't allow it. You know. So we couldn't grow our hair long. Ah, okay. So anyway, during that time, I I met some guitar players in the, the towns called Barrio Obrero. So it's uh, I met some guys who who's who who's really into it, you know. I mean, playing guitars too. It was like a, a showdown by. <laughs> All the other guitar guitar players in Tondo. It's just like, wow! It's an early, you know, like a competition, you know. Yeah. But during that time, I was I, I was playing at a, at a choir. We were called the Peacemaker. It was like a jazz mass kind of thing. So, 
a jazz mask. That's yeah, yeah, crazy. yeah. That's amazing. When the choir goes to take their break, we start playing yeah. uh, My Sweet Lord and uh, oh, uh, nice. you know, George Harrison songs, you know. I mean, yeah. I was playing slide at a very early age, like 13, you know. I was trying to. I couldn't hit it, you know, <laughs> but mm. I was trying, you know. And yeah, you know, and there's there's a the the gala, the the uh, the Reina Elena procession, you know. We play at the back of that, and also when when, when it's Holy Week or the Fatima, we play at the back, you know. But this was all handmade, the uh, homemade, the uh, amplifiers and electric guitars, you know. It was it was different during that time, you know. We didn't have Fenders or Gibsons. It was like the rinky dink uh, instruments that you can have, you know. That's like Lomano, or yeah, yeah, Lomano. Yeah, yeah. Not even Lomano. Not this, even this Lomano. Is the, 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 the other side of Lomano, Bahani. There's there were two stores in Santa Mesa. It was oh. Bahani and Lomano. Bahani was kind of big during that okay. time, okay. and then Lomano was just like starting up, you know. So the guys that I was growing up was with with the, the Bahani guitar makers, you know, in Pampang. Mm. So you know, I the guy there was very good. He knows all the Beatles songs, and he, even if he closes his eyes, you know, he knows it. You know, ask anything, he knows it. But I was into the Allman Brothers, the Eric Clapton, you know. I mean, all the psychedelic things, you know, and we were jamming like we were four, four in the group. Uh, the three played guitar, and the other guy sings and plays harmonica. We were called the the Tondo Blues Band. Nice, <laughs> nice. Yeah, this is a sideline from the Peacemakers, you know. Yeah, yeah. But the, but the Peacemakers were playing and for the for in the church, right? Yeah. And uh, the Tondo Blues Band, us, we play when the the. When there's a lamai, when there's somebody dead, <laughs> so you play at the wake. <laughs> play there, I mean, they so, always request their way to heaven because uh, they want their, their their relative go straight to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> so it was kind of weird, you know. And yeah, I was playing basketball at the same time playing guitar. I didn't know if I wanted to play to become a basketball player or play the guitar. So yeah, you've I always been a big basketball pinky, fan. Yeah, I hurt my little pinky. I said no, no. No, no, I can't, I can't, I can't be a player. I'm too short, but I can be a, a guitar player because I'm a really good guitar, guitar player. Yeah. So basically, so if there's a if there's a wake, you gonna request nila or let's have the tondo blues. Yeah, 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 yeah. We jam there till because the curfew goes till um, twelve o'clock to four in the morning. Oh. So you're stuck there in the wake for. 12 to 4. Yeah. So you can't be on the road, basically. So you have yeah, to be there's a lot of men so There's a lot of cops. Oh. There's no barangay. It's all it's military all cops. You oh. know? You, you, they'll take you and shave your head, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That's That happened yeah, a lot during martial law. That's what they do, <laughs> what they do from, best anyway. <laughs> from the Tone the Blues Band, um, you started getting into folk singing. Yeah, right? uh, then I... I I left school. I left school okay. very early. I didn't finish high school. So, um, yeah, who I needs tried. who needs high school, man? I didn't finish yeah, high no, school. No, I, I still try <laughs> to uh, to study vocational, you know, like yeah. uh, automotive and all that. And by that time, I knew uh, I knew some chords already. I knew some songs. My my sister told me try to sing all of this, 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 that, this, that, that, this. So I auditioned. I auditioned in the club, but you know. The club, the the folk house said, "You don't sound like uh, uh, John Denver. You don't sound like Neil Young. You don't sound like who are you?" I said, "Should I be someone else to play?" <laughs> yeah, you have to be some like uh, sounding like this artist, yeah, Jim Croce that, or that's, Cat that's Stevens big, or James Taylor. That's the big deal in the so Philippines, I, uh, right? Yeah, you I couldn't. Always have I to couldn't. Be like a Jeff Beck of the Philippines or the Neil Young of but the Philippines. Then, no, no, no. This was a different thing. This was a folk, folk singing yeah, thing. Folk singing the man, yeah. So I had to be somebody as a folk singer. Yeah. So, but that time, 1975, I remember Frampton comes alive. Peter Frampton was famous. It just went headlines. He's yeah. he's the, the main man 
in the folk, he was like, okay, I'll try this guy. So I started singing, baby, I love your way, show me the way and all that, you know, penny for your thought, you know, I tried to play that. So finally they got me, okay, you can be in the folk house. So I got a slot, you know, and you so guess that was, what? That was you your first gig. Right? Was first gig. Yeah, yeah. It was called TGIF. It's near FEU and uh, UE, you know. Yeah. And uh, guess what? My alternate in the folk house was hmm. Chico Ipura. <laughs> <laughs> and he so was near so young. That's no wonder I couldn't I couldn't come in as near young because there somebody took my slot already. <laughs> he, he was very good singing near young. You close your eyes, you, you'll hear it's still young. You know? I mean, during that time, that's what they want to hear. You know, you're you. It's either you sound like James Taylor. There, there were like five James Taylors during my time. You know, and like three Cat Stevens and. The, the folk, the girls, the folk singers, they, they sound oh. like Joan Baez, you know, I mean, all yeah. these people know, and all these Johnny, Mi there's this Johnny Mitchell girl, you know, there's this, uh, um, there, there a lot, a lot, a lot of, a lot, a lot of, I forgot the name of the, I think, oh Lord, won't you find me? Janice Joplin. Joplin. Yeah, yeah, there were three Janice Joplins during uh -huh. my time. And that's they because, really that, that's because that's what, but that's because that's what they wanted to hear. The folk house, the people who were booking the gigs, and even the audiences, diba? Dapat plakado. Dapat yeah, yeah, na, like you said, pag, pag pikit mo ng mata mo, dapat narinig ko si Neil Young or si Janice so Joplin. So what, what I did to survive that is like, uh, okay, um, I'll sing a set, one set, and then um, I'll let, I'll jam with whoever my alternate is. You know, I'll nice. jam two, okay. two guitars. Oh. I, I won't sing. I'll, I'll sing back, back up, but I'll jam oh. with her or him. You know. Okay. So you got a, you got a chance to play with everybody on the line. I got to play, yeah. And uh, 1976 was a good year because we had a we had a, like a grand uh, folk singing thing. Mm -hmm. uh, at Phil Am Life Auditorium. I don't know if you remember that in UN Avenue. Yes, yeah, I love I the theater. Yeah, yeah, that theater. We played there. Um, it was sponsored by some German group, you know, and we played there and I backed up all, everybody who played there. I was at the back, you know. Sometimes I was house band. I was house band. Needed, I'll just sneak in the curtain, like, <laughs> and the people, ah, I it. then I start coming in, you know, and with, it's an acoustic guitar with yeah. a with a with a AKG a small one, small mic inside oh. my my guitar, and I make it scream, it. man. I make it scream. Of course, it I couldn't hit the high notes because it's only up to, it's an acoustic, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you can't and wail. After, you know? after that stint, after a couple of months, I, we went around. Folk, folk singers go around. You go TGIF, then you go to um, to uh, my father's mustache was located down near Hospital ng Manila and MH yeah. Pillar. The real, yeah. my father's mustache. The first one, yeah. And then uh, there's this call a house by Luneta. It was also okay. You know, the, the, the nice food, you know. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> The Hobbit House was not yet the Hobbit House. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't uh, get to know Indios Bravos then. Mm -hmm. That Hobbit House that the that, that, that the young kids know was before Indios Bravos, which I didn't get to see. Yeah. But I got played there with uh, this folk singer Willy <laughs> Failona. He's now in Germany. Yeah. Um. We played there, and the name of the 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 folk house was the last unicorn. The Hobbit house was in front, the yeah. other side. The fellowship of the ring. You know? I've heard stories of Indios Bravos and of the last unicorn, man. But yeah. yung naabutan ko lang yung Hobbit house. Ay, yeah, your Hobbit house. You know that painting? That that uh, the painting? The, the, yeah, the Lord of the Rings. Of in the the Lord yeah. Of the Rings. yeah, yeah. yeah. I was there when they were painting that. It was like um, Johnny Moldero, this artist, uh, this uh, the part owner. He was painting that 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 uh, that 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 thing there, you know. 
Oh. And of course, during that time, you know, I mean, somebody passes you a piece of paper and you and you just flick it and whoa, it's the Lord of the Rings. Oh. <laughs> He's moving, man. <laughs> Gango. And then I see Pipito comes in. It, that's him. <laughs> that's him. Yeah, in the Pepe, painting, yeah you know? that, that's Pipito Bush right there. Yeah. It was it was a, and then uh, my first my first actual band was uh, with uh, Pete Canson. And this is when you went Pete electric Canson, already? Um, and uh, Bong Song. It, it, yeah, it was called the Genesis 2. Uh -oh. it, it was kind of like a progressive ethnic Filipino jazz, you know. It was different. Yeah, so I June, went electric already. Some, electric I didn't enough. have an electric, but some good Samaritan gave me an electric. Hey, you need a guitar? Here's a, a Greco Stratocaster. I don't need it, you know. Nice. That's fantastic. Thank so, you. So, so yeah. you guys started playing like progressive. So the first time you went on no, I'm still but, playing acoustic at home. Yeah, but it, it's amazing because your experience with the folk singers, uh, especially if you're jamming with um, everybody who would come up and play and backing them up, you must have had such a huge repertoire of songs that you actually knew. Dati, wala pang, well, you know, I mean, wala kang kodigo or anything. I don't, sometimes, yeah, yeah, sometimes I don't know the song. It's like, my, this is, uh, go back again. Let's go back how my brother-in-law taught me. He taught me pentatonic scales of major and minor. My, uh, okay. Major seven and minor, minor yeah. seven. That's yeah. all. Sabi niya, just find the key. The, these are the scales. And from there, it's you can play anything. Own. I nice. can teach yourself. I can't. I can't teach you what I know. You will develop what you have. It's like okay, uh, so, it's like Obi Wan to. <laughs> oh yeah, and so there's there are some questions now, and um, since you we're talking about your your electric, uh, you're going into the electric days. Uh, shout out to uh, Tracy Gomez. Hey, Tracy, she's saying hi, and uh, she has a question here. So who gave you okay. the red Stratocaster that you had as your main axe until the 90s? I remember that beat up red Stratocaster, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got that. Actually, my brother-in-law, when I when I went to Hong Kong, I thought I was going to go to London, Paris, New York, and landed in Florida, but that didn't happen. So my brother-in-law gave me this guitar. This is so short. He's that was that that and that was your that was your beautiful that's a beat my, up that's red a, that's all i have red, yeah yeah a red guitar three chords and the truth man <laughs> yeah, there you go <laughs> so okay so not electric and that's a genesis too so you started playing progressive ethnic jazz and all that so you've gone from folk to ethnic jazz but now was what still, was, was your still... no no when i was in, when I was in uh, Hong Kong, my brother-in-law was teaching me to get out of the three chords system, go extensive extensions, you know, to go a little jazzy, you know, like yeah. chromatic and, you know, all these other scales, you know. So I tried, I tried, you know, my closest was like um, Jeff Beck and um, Alan Holdsworth. I was trying to get his scales. Pat Metheny, I like him. Yeah. I like the way he makes those melodies. And um Larry Carlton, yeah, they, they always they liked it during that time, you know. But then I got I, I bumped into this guy uh in Hong Kong. He's a rocker, he's a Chinese, and he's got the back of Filipino. Uh, Joseph Tofashi was the bass, he's the the nephew of Roger Herrera, he's a very a profound bass player here in the Philippines during that yeah. time. We played, and the guy sounds like, um, you know, I mean, the Chinese guy sounds like Rod Stewart. He sings, your a, voice is, you yeah. close your eyes, it's him. You know, it's the same voice, the same intensity. Yeah. But did he have an act? And, but there an was accent? a main act. There was a main act. The, right. the Ram Band, you know. Um, it was, um, it was, Did he have an accent when he well, sang? He's though? Chinese, you know. I mean, you know, he eats noodles. I guess. <laughs> so you started yeah, playing yeah, rock I and mean, roll. You yeah, he's playing rock we, and roll in Hong Kong already. We we stole the show from the main app. 
So we were like, uh, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was an AC hall where Eric Clapton played. You know, it was a. Uh... <laughs> yeah. They had, they had, they have, they have. I mean, so, they, 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 they even have reggae, the Rick's Cafe. You know, I go yeah. down there. Some Filipino guys that I know they play reggae. You know, this is so, in the Hong Kong side because I stay in the the uh, the other the side, Kowloon side. Kowloon yeah. side. Yeah. So okay, so you started playing rock and roll. Um, this is like you... nineteen seventy nine to nineteen eighty. Yeah. And then CNN yeah. just came in. You know, it was like, whoa, what's this? You know, and all these. So it's a big way before you're uh, before I get you're, to, knowing before me, you're, you know me, I get to I, I get lucky. I get yeah. to tour like the Aberdeen Court, Rapples Bay, you know. I mean some some English guy, Canadians and all these rich Chinese. Hey, hey you, you sound good, you sound like this, you know. Yeah, yeah we have a party. Can you play jam with us? Yeah. So okay, so wait, wait, let, let me let me go back because you're in Hong Kong now, 1979 huh? to the 80s. Let Something me go back. Um, <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Let's go back. Um, because when did the airwaves happen with Pepe? Yeah, it's pulsing. You know, it's kind. Uh, I can't you, hear. You, it's like we're in. So you can't. So in it's the internet, man. <laughs> the internet is weird. Can you hear me now? Okay. What's well, the question? Okay. So airwaves. When did the airwaves happen? Yeah, June. Can you hear me? Okay. Oh, so when did the airwaves happen? Ah, okay, with Pepe okay. And uh, after after that uh, after that uh, Genesis two, uh, at yeah. all, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. After the Genesis two, yeah, yeah, I can, I can. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. It happened nineteen seventy seven. When I left Genesis 2, yeah, yeah. When I left Genesis 2, it's, um, when I when I left, um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, June. I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. So we're talking about the airwaves. It's uh, it's choppy. So we can talk about the airwaves. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Nan, it's it's, it's going. Si Jamie yung nawawala ako hindi. Okay. Well, yeah. After I left Genesis two, I saw. Yeah, yeah. Airwaves is with the. After, yeah, I left. I left uh, Genesis two because Pepe picked me up. And Pepe asked me, um, "Would you like to join um, the, uh, my new band? Yeah, with Gary, Pe uh, with Gary Perez, Edmond Fortuno, and Don De Ledesma." So I go, "Okay, sure, why not?" You know. So I joined them. The airwaves, yeah. And so it was, how, it how... was like a, a different league, you know. It's like um, from it was like playing with a. With the big boys, you know, and I was the youngest. You know. How old Very were you young, then? Actually, how old were you? How old? How old were you then, June? Okay, we're having internet. The internet's being weird. It's probably 17. the hard brain. You're seventeen, 17. years old, and you're playing with Pepe and the airwaves already, and Bosho, she Edmond for two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fantastic. So, uh, any big gigs you remember? Or any gigs that stand out during the time? We're always wasted. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I can still remember. I can see some of it. You know, <laughs> it was good. It was cool. You know, it was cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think we played uh, lots of gigs. Baseball stadiums, Rizal Baseball Stadium. We played at. Um, Really, really disturbing places, actually. But uh, we pulled it off, you know. I mean, the people liked us, you know. I mean, they like Pepe, you know. I mean, Pepe's like, uh, you know, he can run, he can run for president if he wanted during that time. You know? <laughs> 
That's true. That's yeah. true. So um going into um so you you you're jamming with Pepe at, yeah. at 17 years old, you're doing all these big gigs and all that. Um yeah. and of course you're always wasted because that were, yeah. it's the 70s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the 70s. Um it what is. brought you what brought you to the jerks? Because okay. that you spent, you spent okay, a long let time. Let me tell you how, how it it went before the jerks actually um I was playing I went back to Hobbit because it was it was too heavy for me with the big boys. So I went back to the Hobbit and Rico Veles, the founder of the reggae here, was there playing in a country group called the Moonshine, you know. Yeah. So I was playing slide with these guys and um we moved into this uh, private club, 1978. We moved into the club. Uh, you, you remember there's a tailoring called Toppers at San mm. Andres. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. The, 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 the fourth floor was converted to a private a club. A club for us. You know what I mean? Okay. Pepe was there. Um, floor. I met Floor and he said, you need a drummer. You know? Okay. So I got. I got floor for the drums. Rico was playing bass and I was playing guitar and Pepe would sing and Boy Royal would play uh, David Bowie's and all that. And one time, after that one year thing, I told, uh, I saw Chikoy. I said, why don't we put up something because all my singers are all wasted. <laughs> <laughs> I end up singing also, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I end up making my guitar sing. You know, so it's, I tried to play like Jeff Beck, you know? Like, yeah. So, and Chikoya was still studying. He was trying to finish his school. It'll, it'll be in a couple of months, Julian said, okay, okay. So we started that and we, we named our band The Bureau. It was me, Rico Veles, Flor Mendoza and and Chicoy and Chicoy and Pepe and Boy Royal. <laughs> the two singers were still hanging around with us, wasted like okay, <laughs> you know. So and then after that, we stayed for a while. Then I left. That's the time I went to Hong Kong. Mm. You know, I left with someone, you know. And uh, after after the someone bureau, left me too. <laughs> oh. I mean, so why did you leave? Because yeah. sobrang gulo na, sobrang magulo. Yeah. Then when I came back, when I when I came back, the jerks was there already. Ah. They 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 named it the jerks. I I and never that, named. It. Yeah, it was not. It didn't come from me. It it's yeah, but, choice. But you had a long run with the jerks. That yeah, was like what yeah. five or six we, years. We, we played uh, five years. We were in a long from. From 81 to 85, I think. Yeah, 81 to 85. And this was the Alonga Pop uh, hey, this. That was rock and roll, man. <laughs> that was fucking rock and roll. It because, was yeah, like, because, you know, you go the in US, the base, you go out of the base, you know, they take you to the aircraft carrier and show you all these, holy shit, you know. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. I mean, plus the money was good. You, you go back and forth. We play there for four nights and it was like a training it was like yeah. a navy seal training you know like you play an hour and 15 three sets and sometimes when the seven fleet is there you play the whole night till morning yeah, yeah. i can imagine so that's so that's like you know the heyday of of Alongopo with the u.s bases um and yeah, i'm yeah. sure all the u.s servicemen were loving you guys yeah. Wow, I still I still get to talk to them, you know. I mean, they're still around, you know. They're in California, they're in Missouri, they're you know. I mean, they're all scattered around, you know. So it's nice. It it, it was an experience, and then of course uh, that time I was heavy in. Oh. All right, he disappears. So we're just we're just listening to see this. This is so epic, guys. We can go on forever. Telling the stories of um, of June, um, because I mean, if you just we're just we're still in the seventies for crying out loud, and you know that's 
we're we're already shortcutting for um, when um, when he started playing in Alongapo. And you know that's the heyday. That's the seventies. I mean, that's the that's the basically that's the scene that we all wish we could have now, <laughs> right? Or at least when I started back in the nineties. Um, you know, those those were the heydays. You had you know the long hairs. The U.S. bases were here, and from uh, June's uh, cuento with me um, before, uh, you know, he would he would tell me stories about his his heydays in Alongapo and how when the Seventh Fleet would be in and you have all these sailors who are just into, um, yes, uh, uh, Trissy, Trissy Gomez, heavy into what? Cliffhanger. Yeah, imagine. He just started talking heavy into, and then the internet cuts out. Oh, right there. That's your, um, that's Big Brother at work, probably. You know, um, who were the best bands in Longapo in the 80s? Um, I don't know. We're going to have to wait for June to come back because I wasn't there. I wish I was there. You know, in the seventies and the eighties, and that's when you know a lot of them. Um, when when the U.S. servicemen were here, they were directly responsible for us getting um, a lot of the sources of rock and roll. Because you know, in that day and age, um, when you go to the record stores, all these rock albums were not really readily available. Um, yeah, you could find the Beatles, um, you could find some of the Rolling Stones. Right. And uh, June would actually be telling me um, stories about how these guys who would um, go into uh, go to their gigs and would give them music, would give them LPs, records, you know, which eventually turned into cassettes and turning them on into some really good music because the options were limited. It's not like how it is today where everything's at your fingertips or even, um, you know, a decade ago where you go into a record store and you're going to actually find decent albums. These were the 70s. So everything um, under martial law was really controlled. And the administration back then, the Marcos administration, remember, they thought that um, rock and roll was the devil. You know, it was a protest. It was, um, you know, unruly gatherings. It was a bunch of long hair. So that was frowned upon. So they even controlled the music and the broadcast of the music. There were some radio stations back in the day, um, legendary um, um, radio DJs who would break the rules and they would um, they would play rock and roll and they would go into um, they would go into like things that basically the government did not want them to play. And, you know, I'm glad that's why, you know, the freedoms that we have today um, in terms of the, the content that we can view, the music that we can listen to um, is, you know, we're, we're so lucky and we're so blessed because everything's at our fingertips, you know? Um, so yeah, let's read some of the comments. Yeah. Um, you, did you play the new moon concert at Antipolo music festival? Oh, I bet he was there. I bet he was there. Uh, was no, I'm back. Uh, I'm yes, back. and you're yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sabi, Somebody took Sabi, me away, you know, for a while. So, so, Sabi, some Sabi interest. Sabi ni Tracy Gomez, you were heavy into, and then blunk na wala ka. Sabi ko, oh no, it's yeah. Big Brother. I was heavy into it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, man. So, yeah, so those, those were the heydays in the Longapo. And um, the music scene must have been insane. And then you got into some trouble, right? Yeah, I got into some trouble and I got jailed for quite uh, for a couple of months. No, actually a half a year. Then That's when I got roll. out. Huh? Yeah, it's rock and That's roll. rock and roll, roll by uh, Yeah, yeah. Well, Chicoy visited me and Pepe. You know, it was not bad, you know. <laughs> so Pepe you was hit, in with you? You hit the, the shitters, man. That's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> So, folks, try not to go to jail, okay? <laughs> it's not a good experience. But, hey, you know, June's living testament that um, you can survive those yeah, but, days. You know, I'm so lucky. When I got in there, you know, I said, oh, my God, they're going to rip my ass here, man. So, <laughs> so I, uh, the, the guy there that's like the head, the mayor de mayor, is just like, hey, aren't you June Lupito? Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Stay beside me, man. Otherwise, you'll get in trouble with the other guys. You know. So I got there. I just all I have to do is just play his songs. You know, every night we just jams every night. You know. Well, that's what also Pepe would make Quento when he was in jail. Every night he would have to play the guitar and sing, and it's walang katapusang him. Walang katapusan. No, you have to entertain <laughs> them. You know. Yeah. So, so there's the a hardcore, question. Hardcore, man. It's hardcore. <laughs> 
Yeah, there, there was a question back from the viewers that were asking, did you play the New Moon Festival? Or the Antipolo yes, Woodstock? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yes. I uh, Yeah, during that 77 thing, I was playing with a lot of bands, actually. I was playing... Um, Nilo Santos got me because my brother-in-law is also part of the Nielsen Productions. And... Uh, mm. and Tessie Alfonso, Sampagita, needed a singer. I needed a guitar player. Guitar player. Yeah. And since uh, she's very close with my sisters and they were like uh, old, really old friends, so I got the first pick, you know. I got I got picked, you know. First draft, yeah, first yeah. draft. But then it was like I was playing with, uh, we formed this group. It was like um, um, Jose Hilario, uh, uh, Javi Perez Rubio on drums, Jose Larry on guitar, uh, Ray Nunez on bass, and uh, Mon Alberto on keyboards, and me in Sampaguita. That's the first Sampaguita group. Yeah, yeah. In folk arts, it was the first new moon. You know, the first new the moon first concert. Moon. Man, what yeah. I would give to be to have been alive there to watch that man. Yeah. It was. <laughs> it was. It was pretty. It was pretty neat. The full moon concert was pretty well. Well oiled and organized, man. It was good. It was good. Yeah, yeah. I did okay. play for Sampaguita. Yeah. Okay. So arts. after, so uh, so you get out of jail, right? So you get out yeah. of jail. You survive jail by playing uh, music uh, for your jefe. Uh, yeah. You know? And by the way, by the way, when oh. I was in jail, I was already a Buddhist when I was in the Longapo, and I I, I was just chanting three Nam Myoho Renge Kyos all the time. I never really recited the sutra. But of yeah. course, you're in jail. You you don't have anything to do. So I I memorized the sutra by heart there. So when I got out, it's like whoa, you know, I'm so wait, free. So what, what brought what brought you to Buddhism? Since you brought it up, let's let's go into Buddhism already. What what drew you to Buddhism? Because I know what drew me to Buddhism. Well, um, and that that actually, was actually you. <laughs> Yeah, well, my, 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 in, in, when, where, where I, where I grew up in Valhalla, I always steal coins from my mom, and it was under this, uh, bronze Buddha, you know, and okay. it was like funny, like I had the realization, like this, I asked my Tita, what's, what, who is this? That's the Buddha, you know, it's Buddha Shakyamuni. Oh, okay. What does he do? Is he like, is he like God, like Jesus? Well, yeah. Did he? Who came first, and who came? Well, he came before Jesus Christ. So it was kind of okay. So what is he? He's like a, he's like the Jesus of the Asia, you know, something like that. Okay. okay. And I, I was curious already. Like now that I'm, now that I'm. I understand it like uh, an object of worship will uh, reflect. So if you look at the suffering, well, we already suffer, right? So yeah. I asked my my Tita, why why are we looking at Jesus in the cross? Why can't we look Jesus in the where the where where, where Lola is? He's just sitting down on a throne. He's smiling like this Buddha is just smiling, you know. So I had that that no notion of think that okay, you know. And then 20 years later, I get to meet uh, Manny Adea, which is my childhood friend. Yeah, Manny Adea is watching right now. This Hi, man. Mantra. Yeah. <laughs> I heard this mantra and I said, I heard it when I was in Hong Kong. Yeah. Said, What's this? It sounds like a jet plane, like going to take off, you know. So I said, there's probably a lot of people inside that room. And when the door opened, it was Manny. I said, Manny. And he goes, Rani. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> like, whoa, it's been a long time. Were you the one there? Yeah, it's me. Come, come, I'll show you something. So he showed me this mandala, the gonzo. And I said, whoa, what's that, man? Yeah, just just sit down with me and just say this phrase. Now I'm your whole language your three times. Okay. And then ever since that... You remember Valhalla? Yeah, of course. I we grew up there. Let's go back there. So, all of my childhood friends there were all on the same 
frequency. We were okay. all Nietzsche and Daishon in Buddhism practices, practitioners. So I said, I want in, you know. So I got in and from there on, I never, I never let go. It what became me. <laughs> what was the first changes in yourself when you started practicing Buddhism? What did well, you notice? I, well, I get to uh, smoke less. <laughs> <laughs> I get to save <laughs> and I, I, I get to to play more more with heart and more with like uh, not just playing for myself I, I, I got aware of playing I'm not alone I'm mm -hmm. playing with people yeah. I'm playing for the people Yeah. so it's like I have to be in tune with whom, whoever I am playing with and at the same time, we have to make it really good so the people will feel that energy, that it's good. That's the reason why they become, they feel energized, you know. Yeah. Of course, who wants to watch a band that's fighting, man? I mean, that's true. Know. Yeah, that's not fun. <laughs> that's not fun. <laughs> so it gave, it gave well, I, 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 got it, I got into those kind of things also. Like everybody was fighting on stage. Like, what the? hell's going on you know so what i do is i grab my guitar get a cab and go home and they started <laughs> calling me no i don't want to join your band anymore you're always fighting you know forget about that you know so buddhism yeah, yeah. gave you buddhism gave you a bigger sense of anything beyond you something bigger yeah than yeah yourself, of course yeah you know? yeah yeah i just and feel like a dragonfly you know <laughs> you just feel like well, no, yeah, I mean, the ego and all that, you just think you're the one. It's not. You're part of that big thing. That's what you have to put in mind. You know? Even for the younger younger musicians now, you have to put yourself behind. They come first because they're the one who makes you. It's not you that makes them. It's them that makes you. Without them, you're nothing. Am I and right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's I, I totally agree. And like hearing also, it's great to trace. Um, it's great to trace the influences of Buddhism because Manny, who I know also, see Manny Adeya, um, turned you on to Buddhism, and um, eventually when I started jamming with Coco Jam, and June was also part of Coco Jam. We're going to talk about that now. Um, when I would go and hang out at Pepito Bosch's house in Pasay, you know, after all the gigs, we would just go to Pepito's house in Pasay, hang out, drink and smoke and, and stuff. And um, that's when I actually first heard the chanting. And it was June. So June turned me on to Buddhism, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll always be grateful for that because really, yeah, like what you were saying, it gives you a bigger sense of self. It no, gives I'm you thankful. A I'm thankful for you, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> We're all and part of this. It, it's just passing the, you know, it's like it's not passing, passing the dark, torch, right? it's just passing you a flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we can see in the dark, right? Yeah, we can see the dark. So in Coco Jam, so let's go to Coco Jam. All okay. right. Um, so you're you you've already been practicing Buddhism. Um, we've gone from Pipita's house, and Coco Jam is actually when I first started jamming live with a band and this was in fire and rain and this was with coco jam with rolly maliga and Rico and rain, yeah. i know we're gonna bring up fire and rain on, on pasay road party that was yeah, the first yeah. time i ever jammed and yeah. you were up there and you were up there and that was my induction into rock and roll live <laughs> rock and roll you know but but you stayed a long time with coco jam and you know for those of you guys who have never actually watched coco jam live they are one of the few bands that i know of that can actually start out with a reggae song and turn it into a Grateful Dead, Allman Brothers, <laughs> improvisational. I remember uh, you guys would take, um, um, like, we would do Woman, no, no Woman, No Cry, because Raleigh was a big fan of Bob Marley. And you guys would play that song. It would go everywhere. And it became a 12-minute song <laughs> because of the jamming. And it was beautiful because it was unpredictable. But how was your time with Coco Jam? That, how was your that's time the with beauty Rome? of it? That's the beauty. It's that, that's the when you're on the edge, like you don't know what you're going to do. You have to create. You have to make a path. You have to do this. You know. So something that, comes up unex, un, unexpected, and it's, it's great. Everybody just look at each other like, 
where did that come from? Yeah, and, and that's great. that's exactly yeah. what would happen. But uh, so let's talk about your time um, with Raleigh, Puerto Galera, Coco Jam. Yeah, yeah, and going yeah. Into um, Reggae, yeah. This is this is what happened. When I was when I went to when I uh, kind of after the jail thing, and um, I was playing. I I came to play with Sammy Asuncion. He has a group called Eurasia, and this is this was after just the Edsa Revolution. I got released like uh 24 days before wow. before Elsa revolution wow so it was just like timing it's like this is the new me and the new philippines you know yeah so i i i i played with uh with uh eurasia for a while we did that and then i got i did east force all at the same time with chicoy um edmond and uh, rico Velez, you know and it was kind of getting too much of the, you know, the, the, the bad stuff. So yeah. I, I asked the people, the people, I, I don't, I don't want to play anymore. I, I can't do this thing anymore. So mm -hmm. he said, you want a break? Yes, I want a break. So he introduced me to Kido Kalao and Rosemary yeah. in Kalao in Puerto Galera. Here you will stay for a while and make the best of what you can there yeah. so when i was there i played with uh with sila jing and uh, all the other guys there in puerto and we started this uh like a pinic pecan thing but it's in 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 uh in, in the islands you know like uh, living in the tropics you know, kind yeah. of reggae kind of thing you know so it was good and then i met rolly because we were having the full moon parties remember Yes, I remember those. Parties, well, I barely man. remember those full Every moon parties. Full moon <laughs> till, till it <laughs> rains, man. Yeah. yeah. So Raleigh came there. The original Coco Jam was with uh, Dorai, his mm -hmm. former wife, and uh, Noe, the drummer of Asim, and Heli Umali of the Jerks too. The the one yeah. I come uh, I substitute for. Yeah. Yeah. So they were there and. Rolly got kind of got in love with the place anyway because they they stayed there with Billy Bonnevi at the Hobbit. The Hobbit went Puerto. I did I couldn't go because I was stuck with airwaves and all yeah. that 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 the music business thing. So they went all to Puerto. I was left behind, and they started the Hobbit House there, and they were jamming there, you know. So when when I saw Rolly and Rolly said, "Oh, I, uh, let's let's start jamming there," and everybody started to go separate ways. No, we went to a scene of uh, Group on Pendong, and Heli went back to the Jerks, I think. And Rolly and I were there, so we started something. Rico Bellis came up, and Edmond, and that's where it, Coco Jam thing. So we, when we landed back to to Manila. We, we played at Merrick's. And you guys, you, Miguel Ortigas, yeah. and all the other guys, hey, we have a place here. And, uh, Razorbacks playing there and uh, Wolfgang. So, okay, do we have a slot there? So we got, we got, because of you guys, you know. So that was Tuesday night at Merrick's. I remember this. Coco Jam really burned, burned the kush. I mean, burned the bush. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like, so that's, you know, every Tuesday night, Coco Jam would play in Merrick's. And every Friday night, they got a slot in Calia. Um, one of these iconic yeah, Macaque yeah, bars yeah. on uh, on Palanca Street here. And um, that would be like, so I remember for the lineup of Cali, yeah, Wednesday night would be The Breed with Silamani Amador. The Breed, yeah, 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 yeah. And then Friday night is Coco Jam. And Saturday night would be Razorback. And we would all be just hanging out there, drinking, smoking, getting into trouble, playing music, <laughs> you know. And uh, yeah, so I'd like to say hi to Henry Henry Stokowski. Henry Strakowski says hi. Mayrix in the 80s, magical time. Man. Ah, yeah, hey, Henry. Henry. Long yeah. time, man. Long time. Oh. Long so, time. And then because you guys started playing in Calia, then you started um playing in Fire and Rain as well. Then all of a sudden Makati discovered Coco Jam. Yeah. And, and then, then we went to I, where where did we go? Which beach would we play? That big um, beach in uh, um, uh the, was it who, so, oh, Panlillo? Uh, what's the name of the girl? Panlillo? Yes, I remember that. Oh Puerto my God. Azul, that, no, no. Puerto, 
it wasn't no. Puerto Azul. Eh. It was another ah. beach around Puerto. It was another beach around Puerto. We had a big gig there. But we also played in Sabang. We also yeah, yeah, played. Of course, of course. Yeah, I was I was just a hanger on. So I would actually show up wherever Coco Jam was because they would let me, you know, sing a few songs with them. And that's how I got the girls. Because, you know, doing, <laughs> it's all about the girls, right? You know, because, you know, when you go to a Razorback gig, for example, like in the Cali days, when you go to a Razorback gig, the music's so loud and then they're all poggy. So, wala kang makukuhang chicks, di ba? But whenever I go to the Coco Jam gigs, I'd be like, pajam naman, pare. Tapos, and then June would tell me, bakit my chicks dyan, no? Yes. Diba? Yeah, White Beach, Tracy said. Oh, yeah, we played, yeah, we yeah, played White uh, Beach. Yeah, yeah. Vertical Air <laughs> Music Festival in White Beach. And that yeah. would be the chick, man, because the chicks were everywhere. But yeah, you really... They, they like you, reggae. Yeah, they like reggae. They could dance, you know. But of course, when I would come up, it wouldn't be reggae. It would be like, you know, the doors. It would be the doors, the man. <laughs> Break on and, through the other side. Yeah. And I remember also some of those full moon parties. Barely remember those full moon parties. But it was a magical time. And, you know, in a magical place because Kalaos was amazing. And it was a whole connection between um, Coco Jam, which, which was the unifying factor of everybody, right? And you were part of that. Um, it was Coco Jam in Calle, in Mayrix, in Fire and Rain, in Pasay at Pepito's house, and then eventually in Puerto Galera at Kalaos. So that was a whole... It was, yeah, it, that, I, was I, I would, it, that was a different realm. <laughs> diba? parang touring, different, parang touring circuit, eh. I remember one time you guys played in Bacolod and Rolly was with Maricel already. Uh, uh-huh. Rolly Malika. Um, and um, I asked if I could, hey, do you have an extra ticket? And Maricel's sister, uh, Mar- no, sorry, Maricel couldn't go. So I, she gave me my ticket. This was back in the days before online checking. You didn't need an ID. Right, so I flew to Bacolod for a gig for you guys to jam with you guys that was put together by Junjun Poblador, and my ticket said Maricel Montero. <laughs> so, can you imagine I got in the plane and uh, and the flight attendant's like, Okay, sure, and I'm like, I had long hair, you know, no, like Maricel Montero. Okay, so puede pa yon in those days, you know, and I would just follow Coco Jam just to sing a couple of songs, you know. Um, and yeah, you spent yeah, a long was, time was, with, you spent a long time. It was, it was so much fun. It was a lot of fun. And you know, the, the best part is really um the musical education that we got from from you guys, um, because of your, you know, from everything from your folk singer training to your progressive jazz, ethnic, rock, and all that, and uh us having no structure, the whole idea of jamming where you don't know where the song is going to go. That's what I really miss the most because, like June said, you're on the edge and you don't know what's going to happen. And, you know, more often than not, more times than not, it was amazing. Even even we, the right? June, after like 12-minute song, and we're like, wow, san pumunta yan? Ayop. Diba? Even we would not be aware of where the song is going to go and where and how we actually ended up. Um, yeah, it's like... It's those- like- it's like we continue the the flower power thing, the seventies, you know. Yeah. I mean they were playing like as long as they can, you know. And this was in of the course, 80s of and course, the it's not it's not radio friendly, you know. It's yeah. it's it's only RJ that plays it, the old RJ yeah. plays it like a, the, yeah. the way it should be, you know. Yeah. And so from Coco Jam, we started hanging out a lot because, I mean, I got turned on to Buddhism by June. So I was, June was my mentor. So I kept on pestering him about Buddhism. And I was looking for something to put my soul in other than rock and roll. I needed, I felt like I needed a form yeah, of... Yeah, you got it already. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I believe in, in a form of faith. And that actually, that connection, eventually down the years, when I started working in hit productions <laughs> as a sound engineer, because I needed a day job. Right, and I no, landed no, a job. We, we still, we still had your band, our band, the Deadly Green. Oh yeah, okay. So that goes back to Miguel Ortigas's question. Yeah, um, Miguel Ortigas playing drums. Egg Pie was on bass, you know. Yes, Egg oh, Pie. Or sometimes it's um, Johnny Bessa. You know, yes. it's a mixture. 
I think Deadly yeah. Green is still the best name for a band because you can yeah. take it in any sense you want. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> Deadly Green, <laughs> Deadly Green, baby, also known as Kush. <laughs> <laughs> And then eventually, so yeah, we we Deadly Green was short lived because we were just you know we were having too much fun, um, and we yeah, you know, every, we, every we, time we, every time we form something, we we, we name it a different a different, different name. Thing. Yeah, that's how it was. That you know a different combination of people. Depends a gig. Iba yung pangalan namin. Iba yung pangalan, and, and there were so many gigs back then that we were actually getting to do under different names, um, and we didn't care. It wasn't about building a brand. It was about having fun, getting a gig, meeting some girls. <laughs> Do you remember you know? when we played at Sagad? <laughs> oh my God! I just saw that video on Facebook. There's a point to pasok. Oh my That's God! That's a long trip, man. And we yeah, only this... stayed there for a night, and we went back. But that was an amazing gig, though. That was an yeah, amazing. Yeah. I remember that gig so clearly. Egg pie, yeah. yeah, you know, egg pie. I remember. We had to sleep because we got there late. Diba? Yeah, yeah, we, got yeah. we had to sleep. Night. We had to sleep, yeah. So we had to sleep in the but house. We sleep because we were on acid. <laughs> no. But but you know, but then but we were on acid, but we were trying to behave so much because we had to stay in the priest's house. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. We had <laughs> accommodations now, and Hindi hotel, Hindi hostel, Hindi, you know, what an Airbnb in on. Natutulog kami yung accommodations namin sa bahay ng pare sa parish ng Sagada. Uh, so lahat kami, uh, mga rock and roll, mga long hair, trying to behave because the priest is, you know, oh, ito yung kama nyo, ito yung blanket nyo, and we're all tripping our asses off trying to be behaved because this is the priest who's taking us in for the night. Yeah. And then we yeah, had to play yeah, a gig, yeah. di ba? Dami nating adventures, Dami, pa. Dami, dami, dami. It was fun. Then, it was fun. That, that's a Gada trip. We even played in Maelia's, Maelia's place, di ba? In yeah, Baguio. Yeah, yeah. yeah, in Baguio. Our Baguio days, our Baguio days were also fun, man. You, you know, can wear in, your leather jackets and all that. Yeah. O siyempre, di ba, malamig sa Baguio. So siyempre, <laughs> lahat ng mga rock stars. Tangina. Pasikata ng leather jacket, di ba? And then we... <laughs> And then we would yeah. we would also we would also like pasikatan ng leather jacket tapos pamurahan din kasi uh, oh nakuha ko sa ukay-ukay 50 lang. Ah sa akin bet si 25 pesos lang, di ba? Pasikatan pa kami ng ganun eh. I remember that time in Baguio where the ukay-ukays were like going yeah, strong yeah, and they had that was crazy. That I must have crazy. had like eight or nine leather jackets. <laughs> Because every time we'd go up there, we maganda yan, pare. Oh. <laughs> then when, when we get back to Manila, we can't wear them. <laughs> so exactly. freaking hot, man. Exactly. But then it's so, it's so tragic. I had eight leather jackets. You know, <laughs> just because just because of our Baguio days. You know, when, I could, when it could still fit on me because I was like 100 pounds lighter back then. <laughs> because we were just having a lot of fun, pare. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so after like your bag, we had our baggy days and the Coco Jam days and all that. And I started working for Hit Productions, and you know, you guys were still working. In, you guys, we were there were still gigs in Cali and all that, and that led to the Body Satvas album. Uh huh. Somehow the connections, the universe. I think I, you know, I, think I was playing. I was playing at Bistro Seventies with Grace Nono. You know, Tama, you took a break yeah. from Coco Jam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I even played because even if I'm in Coco Jam, I still, I still get to, you know, I mean, zigzag with another band, you know, just for the night or something. And I can't, it, only for friends, no? I mean, yeah. I can't say no to Grace. So I said, okay, I'll play. I'll play a couple of months with you. And so it's Grace me. Your solo. Yeah, 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 yeah. The first one, the first one, yeah. Yeah. You know, Sally Dumai and all that, you know. And it was like um it was Rene Chong on drums, Bobby Tyler on bass, Tating Katindig on keyboard. So it was a different kind of it was like it was different. It was more progressive, you know, more jazzy or but with the ethnic, with the culture cult, the Filipino culture sound. Yeah, she was, she was would still be, there. Yeah, it was uh, still. Be because like, Grace is Grace is, yeah, the ethnic singer. Yeah, and hey, Grace, you know, Grace is super talented, and she's an amazing artist. Wow. But, you know, she's she's yeah. also really hot. 
Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure it was easy to say, yeah, I'll play with you. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I even played with a band before, the blank. Oh. The blank at Music Museum. Yes, I have this I karma of playing. There. I have a karma of playing with with the uh, the last of the the, the bands days. <laughs> I always end up like, where they go? Yeah, it's gone, man. June, it's finished. The band's not playing anymore. Oh, okay, I gotta move, man. So I gotta, I gotta like hop on to another band. But then and Grace told me, like, I'm going to put up something. Just play with me if you can. You know, I know you're with Coco Jam for a while. You know, what I mean, just play with me if I need you. Yeah, sure, anytime, Grace. You know. What I mean? And then that's why she event, you know, that's why she gave you a song and played on your album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The album. So the Bodhisattva's album was an actually a, a crazy concept because usually, you know, back then, you know, rock and roll was just taking off. We had the eraser heads breaking the mold. Um, all of yeah. a sudden the, the 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 industry, the music industry was interested in rock and roll. And um you you didn't have a band. You didn't have a solid band. So when you came up, what made because you think I was, getting all I your think friends? Because I was a, like a ram. Yeah, because I was, I think I was a, I was just a rambling man. I, I was just like, I'm like, I, I can fit in here, fit in there. You know, I'm a, I'm a troubleshooter kind of guy. You know? So I, I play, I play, I play. But I never had my own band. Up to now, I still don't have my own band. Yeah. So when I you am the, my own. <laughs> <laughs> so when you put the Bodhisattvas together, and the Bodhisattvas, um, you know, not a lot of people have heard uh, because you know uh, that's that's one of the rarest albums of Pinoy rock that you can't get. Only a few select people actually managed to get it. It was a very different concept. It was uh, June. It was June Lupita's album, and he basically um, put together all his friends. So we had. We had Coco Jam, we had Sammy of Spy, we had Pepe was there, yeah, Grace Pepe No and No, Ed. and then Coco Grace Jam was there. So basically, and then Chicoy of the Jerks was there, and they all contributed songs and uh, helped also. Then June composed also songs. So what made you think of that process? Because that was unheard of here, huh? You know, that was the first. Nobody had really done an album like that where a guitar player who could sing was featured. On a solo album, but you had all these amazing people also on it. So, what made you think of doing that? Actually, it wasn't my idea. I think it uh, it was Baba's idea, Baba Bal's ah. idea, to put it all together during that time. Since all these guys, have, uh, why don't you ask them to play with you? So, yeah. So I asked them. You know. And they and all the, said yes. Because I, I, I didn't know any about the business and the people to talk to. And they just, you know, in Bistro 70s, offered me that. Would okay. you like to do a solo album at our studio? So I'd be go, okay. You know, I mean, that's what, what can not? I say? Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, sure. Sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember so, back in those days, that was the beginning lang of digital um, recording. Yeah, 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 yeah. At wala tayong, so, so That's uh, why you know, we, were, we were doing it at Audio Captain, and yeah. then we do it at, 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 at Hit, you know, because that's and digital. Then at, uh, and then, then we, we also to, did it in uh, tracks. tracks. We went to tracks, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. It was different. It was done differently, you know, right? Yeah, we, 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 would, be hopping, we would be hopping studios because yeah, hit yeah. back then, hit. Hit Productions didn't Just have a, a drum room. They don't have that equipment here, and this song needs that equipment there. Uh -oh. We had to go back there, you know. Yeah. So we had to track all the drums in uh, tracks and in Audio Captain. Yeah. Yeah. Kasi walang yeah. Drum, walang yeah, drum 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 for that yeah, yeah. Um, album. Yeah, yeah. It was also fun there doing the album. <laughs> yeah. It, oh, my God. It was like, we would take all night to the point it was where like the trips, man. <laughs> we were having so much fun mixing the album to the point where there were several nights when we were mixing songs that we realized, and thank God we realized it. Na parang, oh no, I think I'm too drunk to mix this. <laughs> and then you yeah, look around you, 
And then you look around you, and there are like three empty bottles of Jack Daniels lying around. There are empty beer bottles, and we're like, why don't we take a break <laughs> and come back tomorrow? Because I think we're having too much fun to actually do a good job. But that was the beginning. That was the very beginning of digital um, audio workstations. Yeah. That was the very beginning of digital. Um, and I think um, I love that album because it made the best of both worlds. It uh -huh. used analog. We had analog um, sentiments. Uh, we had analog tracks. And we had a digital um, element as well into it. And we were learning what to do on the fly because we didn't know it. Half the time, we didn't know what we were doing. Um, but, you know, I think our guiding light was to just um, try to mix or create the best song that we possibly can. And you know what? For those of you who don't know, have never been in an album with June, right? Or in a studio with June. He's Mr. Take One, okay? <laughs> and and he's going to insist on that Take One because that's when, what did you say? That's where, that's where it's pure. That's where the soul is. <laughs> that's where the yeah, that's edge where the, is. That's yeah. where it is. Because if you take, yeah, but we always save the second and the third and the fourth and the yeah. fifth and all that. And when you start listening to the takes and you combine it to the rhythm section, uh, let's go back to the first one because that's where it screams well. That's where the, the X factor is. Yes. And that's I know that's that's not just I mean like that's when the X factor is because that's when it comes out pure. And even mm -hmm. if it's not a perfect take, that's yeah. where the soul is. So I'm a now firm I think, believer. Now that. I think Jamie, now I think I know now I'll be the Mr. Take Two. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, because it's it's better on the second take now with me. It's better on the second. Is that because of age? As I figured out already all the edges that can be trimmed on the first take, and I can still repeat it the same intensity on the second take. But don't give me the third and fourth, man. <laughs> No, because like what we when when we're recording June, you know, take one, and then he would actually take off his guitar and walk out of the studio, and I'm like, June, wait, let's take a safety, let's take a safety take, and he's like, huh, safety? Why? Come on, just we would have to coax you back into the studio, June, to do a take <laughs> two, take three, and then you know, at the end of the day, specifically for this album, we would always somehow go back to take one, and of course, June is just there laughing behind me as I'm trying to mix, right? June's laughing there behind me going, oh, tamo, take one din tayo eh. Bakit mo pa ako pinagawa ng take four, take five? <laughs> and it's always good to have a safety, right? Um, you won you won two awards that year in the NU Rock Awards um, for that album. Oh, sorry, the next year. Um, after when it was released in 1995. For the yeah. NU Rock Awards, you won uh, the best guitarist, which is a long time coming. And yeah. um, you also won for the best rock recording for Pure Souls, which you wrote. Yeah. And I remember yeah. doing. Yeah, we were at Meralco, we were smoking. And <laughs> I told you, no, I'm not going to win this, you know, because Eraserhead's there, Francis M is there, River Maya's there. I mean, who am I? You know, I, I, they don't even know me. So let's just go out and smoke, man. And, and then this, they called your name. The guard comes to us like, hey, sir, uh, who's, are you June Lupito? No, I pointed at you. No, it's him. <laughs> He's holding the joint. <laughs> and I'm like, what, what, what? <laughs> yeah, you guys won. Okay, oh, we won. Okay, we went in and somebody was up there. Salito was holding all I, the trophies up there. Yeah, our producer, Salito Malka, was the one holding in the trophy. And he was so pissed because he made sure we were there. <laughs> and of course, we choose that exact moment to step out. No, nah, we're not gonna win. Let's go. You know, and that was that the classic Mr. Bean moment right there. You know, we all, yeah, have, we all have our Mr. Bean. Bean. We all have our Mr. Bean moments. <laughs> and so, you know, with with uh, with June's Bodhisattva's album, that that was, I think, my first experience in terms of, you know, I mean, we had to deal with all these rock stars in the studio. I mean, recording Pepe. Recording you, recording Jokno Pasilan for Pepito's yeah. Dream. Um, we had, you know, recording Grace was a lot of fun because Grace was my biggest crush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then. He's so, just, just straight up, so, up front, man. <laughs> so when when you guys were telling me, when you and Baba were telling me, Jamie, kailangan mo isundo tsaka si Grace, ha? Sabi ko, sure. 
game. Kasi crash, <laughs> crash ko siya eh. Diba? Tapos babalik ako, tapos mag-mix pa ako ng album. Pero okay lang, ihahatid ko si Grace no no. Diba? And you know, like getting all these personalities, um, everybody has a different behavior. Like June in the studio is Mr. Take One. Rolly wanted to stay away like 20 feet away from the mic because he was deathly afraid of the mic. He didn't like the way... Right? You remember that? He didn't like the way he sounded on tape. Yeah, yeah, but it's, he wants to sound away. So, he was like from one corner of the room and the mic was on the other corner. And I'm like, Rolly, we can't do that, you know? We, we can't hear you, Rolly. <laughs> you sound so far away. So far, man. And then when Pepe came in, Pepe had just gotten out that time, right? Yeah. Kakalabas yeah. lang ni Pepe yeah. nun. Yeah. And then you wanted him for two tracks, which was Rock and Roll ng Bayan for vocals. And that's and, Mr. One Take right there. Yeah, that's he Mr. One in, He barely knew the song. He just listened to it, checked out the lyrics, came in, one take, it was perfect. And that's Pepe for you. And then he played also drums. The, it was the drums first time he played that. drums. Blues on the loose, yeah, for blues on the loose, and that was another one. Um, I remember being there in tracks with Angie tracking it, Angie Rosul, no, and it was the first time Pepe had played drums in decades, yeah, yeah. So, so he lays down the drum track and it was perfect in take one, but Pepe kept on saying, There's a punk take, it's a punk take, just because he was okay, having so okay. much fun. He was having so much fun behind the drum set because it's not hindi na palo, di ba? Uh, so, sabi ko, oh no, naka-take 12 na ata tayo. I think Pepe's just having fun. And, you know, inevitably, we still use his first take. You know, we had to tell Pepe, Pepe, tama na yan. Mah- mahal na yung studio time, pare. Mahal na yung, wala tayong budget. And we still use take one. And that was fantastic because I had never um, actually seen Pepe. I've seen Pepe sing and play the guitar, but I'd never seen him play drums. And that was insane, man. That was he's like lane. Ginger Baker. He's like Ginger Baker. Mm. He plays like Ginger Baker. He was trying to be like Ginger Baker. He was yeah. getting all the chops of Ginger Baker. Edmund was a different cat. He he he's uh, more of a, a stray cat kind of guy, you know. Like mm. uh, his idol, I remember if I recall correctly, is um, Gene Cooper. It's an mm. old. Uh, 50s, 60s drummer, very good, very good drummer. I think he's the drummer of Frank Sinatra, you know. But it's like a wild man, you know. That's why Edmund's a wild man. Plus, he yeah. like um, the drummer of the Who. What's the name of that guy? Keith uh, Moon. Keith Moon. Yeah. Yeah. Keith Moon. So when when uh, the, so when when after we released the Body Satvas album, then only then did we figure out that we have to put a band together to actually yeah. play the music live. Yeah, so <laughs> that I remember, was the hard part. <laughs> you know, it's like we have to get the house band together and start playing this live because that's how you promote it, right? You have to gig live. And we had a lot of memorable gigs um, with the Bodhisattvas because I was June's like backup singer and I would take on some vocals sometimes. Um, yeah, I, remember, <laughs> I remember one particular gig where we, pay, we played on the PBA halftime. Ah, yeah. Yeah, and, it's okay, a so, it's a, it's a yeah, we, yeah, yeah. And we who had got to play that, who got that gig for us. <laughs> I, I have no idea, but all of a sudden we were there in in you know on the PBA court. We were playing at the halftime, and back then wala pang masyadong setup, so we had to play, we had to lip sync. We yeah, had to yeah, lip sync to yeah. pure souls. And of course, June. No, 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 no. It was I think rock and roll and bayan. It was rock and, yeah, it was rock and roll and bayan. Yeah. Okay, it was rock and roll and bayan. And um and of course June is a really big basketball fan. Okay. <laughs> so of course during the guitar solo, and you know, since June was picon that you know we had to play uh, lip sync, he was playing a walis. He wasn't playing <laughs> a guitar. I mean, just to thumb his nose at the tangi na naman, pinapa lip sync nyo ako. Ano, ano to, di ba? So he was playing the he was playing the walis. And during the guitar solo, and I knew this was going to happen, it was, but it was never discussed, right? And I knew it was going to happen. During the guitar solo, he puts down the walis. He walks up to one of the coaches who was holding the ball, or the referee was holding the ball. And June just said, okay, give me the ball. And the coach, out of instinct, okay? Because, of course, it's a player, right? 
you know, pass me the ball. So the the the, the, the referee naman passes the ball to um to June and June proceeds to do a dribble and a, and and he 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 nails a three-point shot. <laughs> <laughs> and and he nails a three point shot, and we're all there pretending we're playing, diba? We're just pretending we're playing <laughs> because it's plus one, it's it's lip sync, naman. And he, he nails a three point shot, and he runs back, picks up the walis right when the vocals come back on, as if nothing <laughs> happened. Tuloy lang. <laughs> And I remember and that so clearly. And all that, the guys, Patrimonio, uh, who's the other guy, Lastimosa, and they were like, what the hell happened there? <laughs> this little, this little guitar player this guy, little, you little know, guy <laughs> does a three-point shot, man, on the first go. And well, that's, I yeah, practice that's, a lot, man. I practice a <laughs> That was a funny, funny gig. And then from yeah. what he said to us, okay, so for, no, for no, the, referee, the referee was Varela. Mm, I don't know. I don't, I'm not a basketball fan. So I, I had no idea. At the, at the Hobbit before. Ah, so he, 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 yeah, he, he knows me. So he gave me the ball. <laughs> and I say, okay. Three points, pare. So we well, had a I lot was, of... I was stepping on the line, so it wasn't really a big point. <laughs> it wasn't a game. Any, I mean, what, what amazed me is that you were able to get the ball, do a three-point shot, and come back in time to sing. Even if it was a plus one, man. <laughs> you know, even if you were lip-syncing, you know, you picked up the walis, played, pretended to play guitar on the walis, and continued singing as if nothing had happened. I was like, yeah, man, that's rock and roll, pare. <laughs> that's a halftime show right there. <laughs> And then yeah, you did, yeah, okay, nobody so, noticed us anyway. You know? Yeah, I mean, they weren't there for us. They were there for the game. Yeah. So we were just good. like messing around like crazy. And then so after after Buddy Santvars, um, we can talk about our gigs all night, but we got to get yeah, to how yeah. you landed in offshore music. Um, and um, for, those of you, for those of you tonight, um, you are tuning in. We're going to be picking the, the best question, the best comment on the feed, and you're going to get a copy of the offshore music compilation album which june has a great song on called weed the world and of course yeah we all love that sentiment right but how did you land in offshore man 2000 and 2006 i decided to uh, 2007 i think i decided to to leave manila again and because i can't i can't i can't get the feel to make songs so yeah. I went back to Kido on a, on a New Year's. Uh, it's like a, it was December 31, 1987. Ah, mm -hmm. the, a, a nine, uh, 2007 going to 2008. So I went there and said, can I stay here for a while? And then I talked to him, can I stay here for quite some time? And said, you, you know, it's so, I mean, Kido is a very... He's a, no, he's a kind hearted person. Like, yeah. Yeah, no problem. You you just have this Kubo here. So I, you know, I built, I brought my stuff, lived there again, and start writing the songs. So most of the songs that's in offshore, the one I recorded, was already done there at okay. Kalao Place. And this is there. this is this is your latest album that we're going to be talking yeah, about. The one yeah, that's about yeah. to be released in October. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's called Body Three NMRK. Yeah, yeah. So uh, NMRK, if you guys don't know, we were talking about Buddhism earlier. Our Buddhist mantra is Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, and that's the abbreviation NMRK. Yeah. And so these songs were written in Puerto Galera back in 2007 yeah, when you decided to take a break. Um, and then what made you decide to come back, and how did you hook up with with Offshore? Um, I met Sandra. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Sandra. She's in the background. Yeah, yeah. Hi. There was a gig there and all that. And um, Chong, Chong, uh, Rene Santos brought them there, you know, for a break or something. And yeah, it's just, it's just there. And so, um, yeah, that, that's the good. real offshore, you know. I mean, they were, <laughs> <laughs> that was the other shore, man. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. so, um, so you started um, recording. Um, who do, who were you talking to? Were you talking to Ellie directly? 
Well, yeah, yeah. yeah I wasn't really ready to talk to anybody because I, uh, I was taking care of Lazuli. You know, she was growing up and she was going to school. I had to go there because Sanders goes to the hospital and all that, take care of business. So, and then I, I get a, a phone call from Juno of mm. Yubanta. Yeah. And mm. he said, like, uh, um, if I wanted to uh, to do an album and all of this thing, you know, and yeah, okay, so I got I get to meet uh, he get he set up a meeting for Raymond Marasigan because they got a studio somewhere yeah. and said you can do your thing here and so okay then we talked and um, I said uh, I'm 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 kind of ancient man i mean I, I i can't follow the rhythm of the youth now most likely i i have to have my own time to record i can't yeah. do a, a two hour there and compose and do it there it's not me it has to take some time for me now to get back to, to groove and get yeah. that 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 facing yeah so it uh, it it kind of hangs suspended for a while and mm. And then um, Ju uh, Juno called me again, and he said, "Like um, uh, Ellie wanted to talk to you." I said, "Okay." So, what? Uh, it's like, what about you know, for a stu uh, studio work or something? So, okay. The, so I had that chance. So I said, "I'm I'm going to say the same thing as uh, what I said, Raymond. Like I need time." Uh, lots of time to do an album because I can't I have to to face myself when I'm going to the studio you know because when you go to the studio they give you a time a time limit like yeah of course yeah I mean two hours and it's hard man it's hard like what we did in hit production yeah I can do that I was like 32 years old now I'm 62 it's hard for me to you to to do that kind of thing yeah so and then I asked Ellie and Ellie just said, "Yeah, sure, do your thing." You know, I mean, there's no, no rush, no, no just, just do it. So when did this start? Oh. When when did you start recording? Uh, Is this like two years in the making, three years in the making? It's like three years in the making. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry to say about that. You know, I mean, no, I well, know, I mean, know no, Ellie's no. kind of, you know, he's a nice guy. He's patient enough for to take me to this. Uh, to this limit you know i mean yeah i'm grateful man i'm still grateful and so who who do you have I, on the I'm, I'm not putting down raymond or anything it's it just didn't work with the time yeah it, it didn't, click. didn't work with the time i can't yeah. work with two hours you yeah. can't give me two hours on a traffic day going to marikina that's pretty bad for me you know that's already two hours that's okay, already three anyways, hours the traffic will drain me by the time i play there i'll probably play Leron Leron Sinta, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no way. I, I could I couldn't do that. You know? With Ellie so, gave me all the, the the time I can, you know. So it um who do you who do you have on the album? Is it a different format um than the Bodhisattvas well, album? It's like, it's like the Bodhisattvas but different players but mm -hmm. most of the songs are mine. Nine of the songs are mine. One is um from Paul Paul Putian of CBI. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, and so uh, yeah. we've heard Actually, we've heard your we've heard. I has one song also there, but it's it's like it's already full. So I pulled it out and I gave it to them. Yeah. For, for their use. Okay. Um, so there, there are some people who are asking here. So let's take a question from Gold. Gold soon. Is there a young artist now that you would want to collaborate with? Um, here young, now in yeah. COVID time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. For example, kung walang COVID. Okay. Or actually, okay. So let's expand. Let's expand um, the question. Okay. Who, who would you want to collaborate with? Any artist, any artist, international, local, I like to, old, I like to, young. I like to jam with Keith Richards. There you go. See, I knew that was coming up. Or yeah, Eric man. Clapton for that or matter. Clapton. Yeah. I mean, I can imagine you guys doing a I, guitar. I can jam with Eric and Keith all at the same time. <laughs> 
and I will be there recording this and I'll interview you afterwards. <laughs> Shell, I no, can, wait, I, what I, am can I? Also go, I can also go a little punk, you know, like I, I could, I, I like to jam with Paul Westerberg if I sure. may. Yeah, yeah, I'll, but I'll, I'll sing, okay? Yeah, of <laughs> course, of course. Kahit na ba sing. <laughs> Always. How, so there's a question from Karina Bustarga. Um, how different is June's Bodhisattva's album to the latest version that he's working on? So let's talk about your two singles that you released from your new album. Um, yeah. We heard Moonflowers first, which I think yeah. is a beautiful yeah. song that has a beautiful, unexpected piano um, yeah. coming out in the end, which reminded me of, you know, perhaps um, your, it, it almost reminded me of the extra of Layla. You know, uh, of the original yeah. version, but in your but in the flavor of Moonflowers. And we also yeah. heard um the other the, the second single that you put out was Sagala Girl. Uh -huh. Um so who is the Sagala Girl? Sagala Girl is uh, like for me it's all the the beauty queens in our country, you know, all, or all over the world, I guess, you know, for that matter. But actually, the Sagala girl, going back to the time when I was starting, when I was playing for all these Reina Elenas, that yeah. came in my head. Though all I could, while I was doing those songs, I could see myself back on in that time playing yeah. with all these Sagala girls that we used to play at the back. You know, I call them Sagala girls. They're Reina Elenas, you know, in the yeah. Forest de Mayo thing. You know, yeah. So that's your that's so your I, tribute I, to all the beauty queens. Yeah, in the in the picture, I got my um, granddaughter, 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 yeah, granddaughter, uh, Andrea, to do it, to do the the, the picture. The, yeah. I asked her, okay, because she's been photo. also been in the, the so these beauty queens. Mm -hmm. he, she's uh, she's always she's like Miss Baggio for I don't know what year for. And she's she's on that road. She's a model, and she's a Taekwondo, uh, Wushu. Uh, so anybody wow. who wants to try something, watch it, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a question here you from Tears. You are gonna cook you. <laughs> we have a question here from Tears to Paul. Hey, Tears, so how you doing? Hey, Tears, so. Um, you're so I'm running out of tobacco, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, send some tobacco his way, man. Or oh, Chino sings on also from the Itchy Worms. Same question, okay? What guitars are you using on this new album? Uh, I was using our uh, a Melody Maker, 1954 Melody Maker. Um, my my tailor, the acoustic, I always put a acoustic on the bed before I, yeah. you know, and then um, the bed of the trap, not the, my bed, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I, uh, I use that, uh, a strat, my strat, mm -hmm. uh, this, this Japanese that's given to me by, uh, by Andy Loxin. Uh, hi, Andy, you know. Hey, Andy. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I got I, I was using that and then my uh, 1970 Maple Neck Strat too, and that's about it I guess those those four guitars. You're not very you're not very gadget um, heavy uh, yeah. in terms of well, pedals before, and stuff. I, I try to blend in with the gadgets, but what I notice is notice is when I play when I make the sound or when I record it. It's not brillo. It's not clear. It's not. Mm. It's not there. There's no bite. It's like it's. It's like toothless. You know. I mean, it's not there. So, I parang try it's, parang to it's going through too many effects. Yeah, yeah. The effects drowns the clarity of the tone of the guitar. Mm. Remember, the guitar uh, is like the electric guitar is like a, an acoustic. You just put an amp. Yeah. For an extension to make it louder. Yeah. Like, of course, Robert Johnson was playing acoustic and Muddy Waters electrified it. So it became more louder. Not really louder, more heard. Yeah. So for me, it's just like the amp and the guitar is enough for me. Anyway, it's digital now. So they can tweak some effects in it. If, you know. Yeah, but, but even like when you play live. 
Ha? Huh? When you even when you play live, wala ka masyadong gadgets eh. Yeah, yeah, I I don't. Oh. But I crank, up the, I crank up the volume a bit. So I have yeah, a little yeah, I know I know that dude. I've I played with you. That team. <laughs> you know, I'm a, I'm I'm in I'm in the middle of the uh, the dirty and the clean, you know. You know, it's just something there, you know. Rough there's edges. another there's another question here from Neil Bantugan. Do you have any preferred amplifiers? What's your favorite amplifier, June? Because that, that matters. Well, you know? during the time, I was using Marshalls. For Fenders, I like Marshalls. Okay. But nowadays... For, fen- for Fender guitarists, you like playing them through a Marshall. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it was all tubes, you know. The, 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 the more the... The tubes are heated. The the, mm. the more the power of that amp goes, the Marshall amps or a twin reverb that's good for me. Yeah, Fender twin reverb is all, pretty good all too. All tubes, uh, all tubes. Yeah. But then came the transistor and all these uh, digital thing. You can copy the sound, yeah. but you can't yeah. copy the intensity of the brightness of that moment when you play it. It's not the same. So I still. Well, when, when I was recording with at offshore with Ellie, I always wanted to plug in the plug in the in the um, the amp. Yeah. But the problem with my strat is the problem with that kind of plugging is sometimes the pickup has hums, 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 mm-hmm. hums. Mm-hmm. Well. Yeah. I thought we we're already advanced in digital things. <laughs> Why not big noise that and raise that? You know, I mean, I mean that's what I thought. The, the digital can do, I think they can, you know. Yeah, yeah, but so, there's still st- some limitations. There's uh, see Juno Bandas here. Hi, Juno. Hi, direct Juno. Um, hey, he, said that, no. <laughs> he said that you love, love the, that. the he said that you love the matchless amp. Ah, uh, yeah, Juno. yeah, because Juno Juno told me use this. I said, Whoa, this is like fa- this is like twin reverb and Marshall all in one. But then I asked Juno how much is it to forget that one. I'll just buy it. That's, you know? that's the thing with Juno Obani's gear. You know, he makes me listen to headphones and it sounds like the best I've ever heard. And then I ask how much his headphones are and I can buy a car. <laughs> first headphones. And I don't even have enough money to buy a bicycle. You know what I mean? So I'm like, wow, yeah, I can't yeah. afford that. But can I come to a listening party, you know, to your house? Yeah, that's why Juno... Like as soon I'll as, as soon as pro- I'll just probably buy a lot of greens, man. <laughs> so as soon as as soon as the pandemic like lifts, pare, we should have a listening party in Juno's house, man, because he's got some amazing gear. Let's gather so, at the Araneta Coliseum and let's have a big party. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you know the first gigs that we're talking about when once the pandemic lifts are gonna yeah. be insane, and we can't. Yeah. I mean, I for one cannot wait to. To uh, listen to your new album, which is Body Three NMRK, that's coming out in October on Offshore uh-huh. Music, and uh-huh. um, and I, uh, you know, even better, I can't wait for, to hear it live in a bar, in at a gig, you know, to 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 see it played live. It's still a different experience, you know. Although I'm grateful that you guys are recording, and it's gonna come out, and. I, but for me, nothing beats the live experience. Eh? Because, I, I mean, knowing you, June, it's different when live. Eh? Yeah, of course. A- anybody who plays live, it becomes different. If yeah. you try to copy yourself, yeah, sure. I mean, who are you pleasing? The audience, the promoter or something? Yeah, of course, that's it. But I think when it comes to music, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's different when you, when you paint. You paint, mm. you capture it. It's already yeah. there, right? Music, you record, but when you play it, the artist play it, can still play it live, it becomes different. It's a moving picture. It's a yeah. moving energy. It's yeah. different. But they always go back to where it starts, of course. Yeah. You have to end and start. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Nino Mendoza. So, Nino Mendoza that, says hello. That, that's where you, know, you put a sax here, you put a... A flute here, you know. I mean, it can be anything. Uh, Nino, Nino Mendoza says hello. Uh, says he misses you. Hey, Congratulations. Nino. Congratulations on the new single, Sagala Girls Rhythm Groove. Just drive me crazy, mama. Yeah. <laughs> I can hear I can hear Nino's voice actually saying yeah, yeah. that. 
doesn't Nino have a coffee shop or something? Or he's yeah, selling- he's doing um he's he's selling coffee now. It's uh, it's called the Misty Mountain Cafe. Yeah, I Misty buy- Mountain. Yeah, I buy my coffee from him. Yeah, it's we're fantastic. running out of coffee. Can you send? <laughs> oh, padala daw, Nino, padala. Um, there's uh, Olivia. There's an Olivia Gonzalez and one here saying, "Hey, Jamie, tell my uncle I am watching. Love, Jeng." So Jeng is That's saying Jeng, hello. Jeng. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's in uh Seattle. I think he's in the U.S. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. How's the COVID so- there, man? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's a request here also from Do- Doas Marks. Please reissue Bodhisattvas on vinyl. Fingers crossed, baby. We're working on it. We're working, We're working on, on it. it man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then, you know, before before we go backwards, you know, I think um um it's it, I I for one am really excited to hear the uh, the rest of the songs on the new album of June. Um that's Body Body three and MRK. It's uh, it sounds exciting, and you know what's important. I think when you know talking about how June started earlier in the program, where you know he started playing with a choir and he went through folk singing and jazz and all that. Um, to see how he sounds now, because I think June and I were having a conversation earlier that um, it's you play differently now, June, and hearing your singles like on Moonflowers and Sagala Girl. Um, yeah, I can, I can, see, I can hear the difference of how you are playing, the choices that you make, the feel. Because I played with you live, and I was there in the Bodhisattvas album, so I can't wait to hear the new album. Um, how have you changed um, or grown in terms of your, uh, in terms of your playing, June? Well, I, um, it's like. Um, as one that's like uh when um when you get older i guess you know it's like uh, you get all the experiences from the past and you try to look at the future you hear the the new sounds and you try to put them together and you see what's happening around you what you do nowadays it re- it reflects to the character and when you start to play it comes out there remember i think i'm a, i'm a i'm a wild cat you know i mean before when i was a punk and ev- anybody steps on the stage i smash him with a guitar man i mean <laughs> I, I i try to take that away and try to chant for the people that i hurt yes. and um Try to do good. Try to control that anger and transform it to a better energy for creativity, I guess. And that's a that's a that's a really good journey in terms. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. what the, that's what we should do. I mean, we should get like Tiersa Paul saying, we age like a fine wine or a fine wino, right? Yeah. Um, hopefully, we get better with age. We get um, mellow uh, with age. Yes, transform your yeah. anger into creativity. Uh, you know, turn the turn the negative into positive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Turn the poison into wine, and that's that's yeah. that's a Buddhist yeah. precept right there. You know, that's the core of our Buddhism because our Buddhism is based on the lotus flower, and the lotus flower is a beautiful flower that grows in dirty water, in murky water. Uh-huh. It's not one of these like nice, you know, flowers that you see that you can just pick up like roses. You know, it's you know, beauty it- coming out of dirt. You know that I just I just found out I was just watching NHK about mm-hmm. the lotus flower. The lotus flower is like it's there. This the 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 metaphor, the the dirty water and all that. And it, the physical aspect of it, it's still there. They they found out that the the leaves of the of the the lotus flower. This Japanese scientist synthesized it and made it to a paint that mm-hmm. can. It goes with the the shadow of the the light. Wow! And it doesn't rust. Wow! Yes, ah, that's amazing. That I just found out a couple of days ago. This Japanese guy, who is uh, who's the founder of this Toyo Toyo mm. nah, Toyo something company, yeah. and I, when every time I read the SGI magazine, I see that Toyo company at the back. Yeah, they do construction um, stuff, I think. 
I think so. Yeah, company. it's 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 a new it's a new kind of paint. They paint cars. It's it's a fabric also. It it it's funny, you know. I mean, both and physically that's all and spiritually, it has meaning. The lotus yeah. is is it's a wonderful plant, man. A flower. It so has quote, use, you know. To quote Neil Young, "Rust never sleeps, man." Yeah, 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 yeah. You know. Only, okay, only so. Us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we need to sleep, you know. Um, and that's why. Okay, so we're gonna go on the rundown, all right? So this is okay, like okay. my basic ten questions that I that I'm gonna be asking on every show. Uh, this is based on James Lipton's ten questions, but I've modified it a little bit to fit the rock and roll lifestyle. So June, um, I just want you to answer this quickly. No need for explanations, right? Okay. Um, and it's the first thing that pops into your head. So, um, first question is, what is your favorite word? Okie dokie. <laughs> Okie dokie. What is your least favorite word? Word. Least or the one I don't like. Yeah, the one that you don't like. The word. What's the word you don't like the most? I can't say it uh, on air, right? Yeah, you can. Really? It's the internet. Yeah, it's the internet. Fuck my neighbor. <laughs> oh my god, that's that's like more than one word. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's horrible. All right, what turns you on? Um, music turns me on. Plants turns me on. You know. <laughs> just one. You yeah, have to well, give just one answer. Yeah, well, give one don't, answer. don't get me wrong. I still get turned on by, by girls and all that. You know? <laughs> it's, it's what I want now, you know. I mean, it's, so music. Let's music, go with music. Yeah. Okay, music. All right. So what turns you off? Neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> Neighbors, neighbors, neighbors. No, no, no. I mean, neighbors. what turns me off is um, you try to talk to people and the people just won't accept. So what do you do? You don't push it. You just leave. You just get okay. out of that scene. You know. So close-minded people. All right. Yeah. Um, what uh, sound? Yeah, I don't have time for that sometimes, you know. What sound or noise do you love? I like the sound of the the birds singing in the morning. Yeah. Sometimes it's accompanied by the water pump. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's so what you know, I mean the water, you know, probably it's just the waterfalls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's nature. Nature nature, nature sounds. Okay, so what sound or noise do you hate? Um, the, the the people shouting like in a tricycle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay, in, I mean, you know, the cars that are noisy. Yeah, you know I mean, noise can be beautiful sometimes. You know, I mean, yeah. but when it's when it's passed with a negative energy, the sound is a negative energy. Yeah. That's annoying because you can feel it. I don't know. I can feel it. You know. I mean. Yeah. I don't know the other people. You know. Okay. What's your favorite curse word? Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um. What's your favorite drink of all time? Um. I used to drink um. Uh, uh, Jack Daniels. You know. But now I think I'm moving. To this, uh, what's this? Irish milk Bailey. Bailey's. I like this. You're Bailey's. Going through Bailey's it's nice and sweet. Yeah, yeah, huh? it's, Bailey's nice, nice. it's nice. It's like milk and all that. You know, a couple of joints and that, and you got it, and, man. And you're good. And you're good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So well, if um, there's not none around, I still drink beer. You know, that's that's yeah. about it. And what's your beer? Pale, pale? dry. You you nah, still drink yeah. pale. Whatever there is, you know, especially if you're in the jungle, you know. <laughs> um, okay, so if yeah. you if your face was on a t-shirt, what would a t-shirt say? Nam yo horengekyo. Yeah, nice, nice. And okay, so for my last question here, um, for the tenth question, if you were to meet God. And God, uh, when you when you when you cross over to the next life and you met God and God received you in the pearly gates, uh, what would He say to you? What would what? What would God what? say to you? Say to me? Yeah. Or what would you like Him to say to you? We have a joint. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, baby, and that's Let's rock and roll, man. Right? Let's start replanting <laughs> marijuana in this goddamn plant. Weed the world, baby. Weed the world. Weed the world. Yeah, it's weed the world. All right, okay. So one, one for the road. One last question for the road. Okay, for anyone starting out in music today, what words of I, advice? I, uh, so uh, for okay. anybody starting out in music today, what words of advice would you give them? Just be true to yourself and practice a lot, you know. Because when the time comes for that solo or that gig or whatever, you're ready. You just have to practice every day. One hour to one minute, you know, touch the guitar once in a while. And don't watch any video to copy anybody. You play from your heart. The heart beats for your, for your music. Yeah. The mind just disturbs you sometimes because mind is just like the wind. It keeps on swirling away. But when you play with your heart, I don't know what's going to get, go wrong with that. So be yourself and practice play with your heart. Practice. And for the electric guitar players, practice on acoustic before you get up on that night gig. Practice with acoustic. Because it's like a you know when the players, they have this ball, the heavy ball thing, and then when yeah. they touch the ball, it's light, right? Yeah. So yes. it, the strings, you practice with the heavy gay, uh, and the acoustic is already heavy. And once you start holding the electric, it's just like peanuts. It's just like, you know, you run like the wind, you know. All right. Thank you, June. So that's, that's, that's words of wisdom from June Lupito. Be yourself. Play with your Be heart. Yourself. Don't copy anybody. And for the guitar players, practice on acoustic first before you pick up that electric for the gig as a warm-up. Thank you, June. All right. So we're yeah. going to be wrapping this up. Um, before yep. we wrap this up, like, hey, you know, um, don't forget, guys, uh, June's uh, new album is going to be dropping in October on Offshore Music. Uh, it's going to be on all streaming platforms. It's called Bodhi 3 NMRK by June yep. Lupito. Um, we're all excited to hear that. Um, also, um, uh, I'm going to be announcing the winner for um, the offshore CD that uh, okay. we got. And I think the best comment that I saw, or the best um, uh, question that I got was for, from Corina Bustarga. Corina Bustarga, if you're still on the stream, please message us. Please message Offshore Music or, hey, message me if you want. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the question right there. How different is June's Bodhisattva album, the latest version that he's working on? And so you win, you win an offshore CD. All right. Um, thank you so much, June. We're going to let yeah. you go. Thank you for sharing and giving your time okay. with us. Thank you for coming on, on the rocks. More power to you. Stay safe, my brother. Stay sane. And you too, let's, weed, you let's too. weed the world, baby. Let's weed the world. Hey, you know what? Oh. You know what? This sounds like uh, the Jamie Wilson show. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it sounds good. It's, it doesn't <laughs> sound like it. It's like the Jamie Wilson show. No, man, we're just hanging out. I, I'm, I'm just a bartender <laughs> here. You know what I mean? And it's, all, it's a, always a pleasure to, uh, to talk to yeah, you, June. Yeah. And I can't wait to hear the music, and I can't wait to see it live, baby. Salute. All right. All right. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, that's June Lupito for On The Rocks. Okay, so i just like to remind everybody that, um, you know, the this this uh, On The Rocks um, uh, episode is going to be up on... Uh, a lot of streaming platforms on Sundays. So it's going to be on Spotify and, you know, Google Podcasts, et cetera, et cetera. So you can catch it from there when we upload it. And um, please follow Offshore Music uh, on their Facebook page and on their Instagram page um, for more highlights. We're going to be talking to more of their artists and other artists as well on this show. So thank you for being part of the first broadcast. Thank you, June, for giving us your time. Thank you, Offshore thank you, Music. And, you know, for the last call, guys, I would like to... Thank everybody for showing up, and I'd like to remind everybody, please stay safe, stay strong, stay sane, and hey, man, you know, however way you want it, you know, sometimes life gets on the rocks, and all you got to do is take that shot. Take your shot. Just keep on rolling. And keep on <laughs> rocking and keep on rolling. So, yeah, man, that's it for us. That's it for On the Rocks. And, yeah, we're a few seconds away from the two-hour mark. That's perfect. Great timing, guys. So, grazie, thanks grazie. a lot, June. Thanks, Check out thanks. the new album. And hey, man, peace out. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>